You know, about uh, 10 years ago, there was a president of a major Christian university that asked me what I saw as the next big problem for the Christian church. And what I told him was that I anticipated that within the next 10 years or so, the big thing was going to be mysticism in the Christian church. We're there. We're there today. Uh, the objective word of God is out the back door, and mysticism and experientialism is in the front door. Now here's why that's important. Once you reject the objective word of God and in its place you put mysticism and experientialism, anything goes. People today are basing their theology on what they feel, on their affections, on their personal experiences. And this has become very huge in what's called the emerging church movement. Now the emerging church movement is many things to many different people, but one thing over 90% of the people in the movement have in common is their commitment to mysticism. And so as a result of mysticism, here's what we're seeing in the Christian church today. We're seeing Christians practice yoga. We're seeing Christians engage in deep meditation. We are seeing Christians use Christian mantras in order to go into a deep state of meditation. Now for those of, those, those of you who don't know, a mantra is a holy word that you repeat over and over again in order to go into deep meditation. This is Hinduism, and yet it's penetrated the Christian church in the form of mysticism. And we've also got prayer stations and contemplative prayer among many Christians. And contemplative prayer is not the kind of prayer where you objectively voice your concerns to God and ask for his help. Rather, contemplative prayer is a deep form of meditation where you lose consciousness of all of your surroundings and you're absorbed into the deity. You're absorbed into God, and it's what New Agers call God consciousness. Now, the bottom line is that New Age God consciousness has penetrated the Christian church in the form of mysticism. And what's really dangerous is that these guys are actually quoting Bible verses to support their viewpoint. For example, in the Old Testament, we are told, Be still and know that I am God. You know, God tells his people, be still and know that I am God. They interpret that as deep meditation, where you lose consciousness of your surroundings and focus only on God. Well, that verse has nothing to do with deep meditation. It simply means, my people, relax. I'm in control of the world. I will take care of your problems for you. That's what God wants us to know. Here's what we need to do. We need a return to a commitment to the objective word of God. The Word of God is our only barometer of truth. The Word of God is a barometer against which we test all other ideas and teachings. This is exactly what the Bereans did in Acts chapter 17. They tested everything Paul said against the Word of God. If Christians would do that one thing today, to test everything against the Word of God, they wouldn't fall for this stuff related to the emerging church movement and contemplative prayer and mysticism in the Christian church. Uh, one of the things this mysticism has also done is made Christians open to other religions. That's why we have Chrislam today, the idea that Christianity and Islam are basically compatible. It's also why we have the development of hybrid religions today, such as Christian witchcraft, Christian paganism, Christian spiritism, where you contact the dead. These are all movements that have arisen as a result of this mystical, experiential theology that we have today. So again, the solution, back to the Bible. Back to the Bible is the name of the game.